Hey, I'm Dave and this is Ruth and this is our 40 day journey. We've been married now for three years. Life is amazing, but through the ups and downs, have you ever wondered, is there more to life than this? This film is our journey and a creative expression of our thoughts. We hope you enjoy. All of us have a story, a unique story, the story of our life. The opening act as the earth embraces the sun, we endure the day and perform to the beat. A cast of long shadows dance as we draw to a close. As you gaze up into the night, the infinite darkness, there must be more, more than our day to day. The next performance begins. We rise, we work, we eat, we sleep. Again, we rise, we work, we eat, we sleep, repeat. We rise, we work, we eat, we sleep, repeat. Day after day, there must be more. All good stories have three acts, a beginning, a middle, an end. The beginning starts the new creation. The ending is the passing of a generation. But what about that middle act? Is there more than just a performance? We are setting off today, we're off to Johannesburg. We know it's going to be an adventure, so let's go. Just arrived in London, Liverpool Street. It's day two, it's the weekend, and we're heading to church with our hosts, Anthony and Charmaine. This is us arriving at the church early, before everyone else, getting ready to sit up and film. But it's also the point, I nearly dropped the camera. <laughs> day, day, day. I'm Dave, 27 years old, born and bred in the UK from the town of Ipswich in Suffolk. At the age of 20, I met Ruth at university. By the age of 24, we were now married and living together in Ipswich. I work as a filmmaker, creating content for brands, individuals and organisations. I just love telling stories and finding new creative ways to do this. We set out on this 40 day adventure to make a film that captures our journey. I grew up going to church, but here you hit a point in life where you start to ask the question, is church relevant to me? And that's the heart behind this film to explore this question, is there more to life than this? So over the next 40 days, we're going to visit various countries and meet different people. All of these people are connected to the Christian faith, but they all live life differently in different areas of the world. So that brings us back to South Africa. <laughs> As we arrived, we took the opportunity to find out how South Africans at the church answer the question, what is faith? As a person, if you don't have faith and you don't believe in something, you will never survive. Faith is the fundamental of what we believe. It is the cornerstone of what we believe. So I have learned in standing in faith to be patient. My faith in God is what keeps me going. We see faith as a little boat on the water that we're on. And then um, the faith is to step out of the boat and walk on the water. As you can see, this church is massive, and this is just the entrance hall, but let's show you our church back at home. We go to a small community church in Ipswich called Fields Church. It's a congregation of approximately 70 people on a Sunday. We meet in a school hall. We love it. So many good friends. It's like our extended family. The story behind the church is that 20 years ago, our leaders traveled from South Africa to set up Fields Church in the UK. So it felt right to go and visit the church that they began their journey. We're 
We've experienced praise and worship similar to this back home, but this felt significant. I don't think anyone could have entered this room and not left encouraged and challenged about 3,000 people singing and declaring songs to the big man upstairs. It felt like a glimpse of heaven. It was an experience we will never forget. And we just said goodbye to Anthony and Shomi. Um, part one done. And um, we're now going to catch a coach and we can see Swaziland. See you soon. We were staying in the confines of a sugar plantation and as you can see, sugar was everywhere. Once the crop is ripe, the fields are burnt and harvested, filling the night sky with this immense orange glow. We found some cane freshly burnt and left on the side of the road. Oh no, it's juicy, oh wow, yeah good. Sweet. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> A short distance from where we were staying is the factory. This is where all the cane from the plantation is processed. It goes into the factory and comes out as brown sugar. Swazi sugar is distributed across the world, so you may be adding a little bit of Swaziland to your coffee every day. That's the end of day six. Join us tomorrow, day seven. See you later. Day seven. Let's go. Today we are leaving the safety of the sugar plantation and crossing over into the poverty-stricken areas of Swaziland. The sugar plantation is a safe haven for all its workers. However, once you leave through the gates, you hit the reality of Swaziland. These people are living in shacks, with minimal food and water, with no hope for their future. Life is tough. What are they living for? Walking around these small villages really hits home how fortunate we are to live in the UK. I can't help but wonder, why does God allow so much suffering? I'm Ruth, 28 years old. I work as a nurse for the NHS. I grew up in Nottingham with my parents and two brothers. From a young age, I remember going to church every Sunday, singing songs and catching up with friends. I loved it. But as I got older, I started to ask more questions. Why do we go to church? Is there really a God? Is there more to life than this? 
In my early 20s, I did a bit of traveling which allowed me to see more of the world. It was an incredible experience seeing the wonders and vastness of creation. But I still had the burning question, why does God allow suffering? Coming to Swaziland has been an eye-opening experience, how one lady's love has changed the future for so many. She has given them water. She has given them food. She has given them an education. She has given them hope. We had the pleasure to spend time with La Salette, a widower who has sacrificed so much to provide for the people of Swaziland. My name is La Salette Duarte and uh, I originally came from Portugal. I left Portugal in 1968 and I've been in Swaziland since. Well, I saw the need of the children. I mean, there's so many children in Swaziland. They do need help. 2007. <laughs> That's when you start the, the care point. And we have nine care centers today running. 2,000 children now, we feed every day. So, you know, that's, I believe that was the dream that God put in my heart was for me to start those care centers where the children could come and stay inside today, you know, just create like a haven for them and security for them. The work Lissalette has done over the years is incredible. The difference one lady has made to the people of Swaziland is amazing. She had a dream and has dedicated her life to fulfil it, to give this community hope. Today is Sunday and we're heading to church. La Salette is the lead pastor of the local church, so we're excited to experience church in Swaziland. As we arrived at the church building, you can hear the sound of the worship. The people of Swaziland love an opportunity to sing and dance. It's day 10, one of our final days in Swaziland, so we took a final visit to one of the many care points La Salette has set up. I 
couple have seen the story of a widow who has given a lot. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. She gave her heart. Hope. It's a feeling of expectation and a desire for something in particular to happen. She has created hope in a generation. An expectation, a desire, a dream, an ambition. From one lady's transformation and willingness to give extravagantly, she has given hope. in our lovely humble abode. I think after this first trip, the biggest question for me has been, is this real? We've got to get up early tomorrow. We're going to hit the road by three to get to Luton. See you in the morning. Israel. Hey, 15, we're on the way to
The couple have seen the story of a, a man who shaped the future. From small beginnings, a baby born in the stable in the small town of Bethlehem. The story tells us that the man did the unexpected, things that shaped and influenced the world. Faith. It's complete trust in someone or something. The mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds on the earth, yet when planted grows into the largest of all garden plants. Faith in something that starts with small beginnings grows into something so profound you can no longer ignore it. From one man's actions, generations have followed in faith. Travelling around Israel was an unreal experience. We've all grown up hearing stories about Jesus, but to have walked and visited the locations of where these stories happened was incredible. Even if you don't believe in Jesus, to see the actual places where these stories are based 2,000 years ago was an experience we won't forget in a long time. The question I asked earlier, is this real? Well, if anything, it feels more relevant than ever before. Our host in India is a chap called Bao. This man lives to take the Bible to the places that have never been reached before. I'm Balkan and I'm an evangelist and a Bible teacher. So our churches consist of all walk of people coming together. The vision of the church is to reach the people who have never heard the gospel. Uh, I never heard the gospel uh, till I was 18. And I said, Jesus, I want to know you. And it changed my life, you know. Everywhere I went, I just testifying and telling about Jesus. Like whole town knew that there's a boy who, who something happened to him. Part of Bell's ministry is that he leads a small community church which meets in the local school. We were excited to see how it compared to our church back at home. Brace yourself for some flag waving.
church. Today we're heading out on a mission trip with Bao. The plan is to travel to this remote village to visit a family that Bao took the gospel to a couple of years ago. To give you an idea of how remote this place is, we have to take two plane journeys and a four hour car journey just to reach the village. Driving through these remote towns and villages, you see the real picture of India. There are people everywhere, living with minimal. Just before we reached the family we were staying with, we stopped at this small community. It was unreal. Seeing these people who had minimal, kids standing completely naked, sewage and waste filled the streets. It was one of those moments where words can't really explain. It was probably the hardest thing we chose to film over the 40 days. We carried on our journey down the road and arrived at the family home in the small village. This is where we'll be staying for the next few days. Considering what they had, they welcomed us with such hospitality. Their house was a simple concrete structure with minimal furniture, which they had collected over the years. A year or so ago, Bao visited this family. Through him sharing the Bible with them, they converted from Hinduism to Christianity. This was a big step as the Hindu faith strongly opposed conversion between different faiths. As we spoke to the family, we heard the stories of how they'd been persecuted because of this decision. But the culture in India has so many challenges as we discovered when speaking to the family. We've just been chatting to the guys here that live here and hearing a bit about their testimony and oh my goodness it's horrific hearing how some people, particularly the ladies, are treated here. It's horrendous. One of the ladies um, was in tears because she had a, she gave birth to a, a girl and she was so, she was pregnant again and she was fearful that the other child was going to be a girl and there's such a stigma around having girls here. One of the girls was say about her husband left her and um, he's come back but he still beats her and when he's had too much to drink and horrendous. Um, again, you just can't you just can't imagine it for these for these people that live here. We've got a mozzie net up and ready. We've got our mozzie spray ready for the night. We've taken our malaria tablets. Um, if you can't see, I'm so warm. It's so humid. And yeah, we're just sort of setting up our humble abode for the next hour um, here for two nights. Um, it's a very quick visit. Um, but yeah, we're going to explore tomorrow, but um, before that, we're going to get some kip. The skiing net's all set up and everything's ready to go. Um, yeah, this is the most remote I've ever been. It's probably the furthest from home I've ever felt. And I must admit, it's just it's a strange, strange feeling. But before that, bed. Good night. That evening, things took a turn. The unexpected happened. The community was a strong Hindu community and they did not welcome Christians. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. This is us making a quick exit soon after the sun had risen. It was one of those moments you really question what we were doing here. News had spread about us arriving in this remote village and that Bao was travelling with us. During the night, a few hours after we went to sleep, 50 men had travelled armed with weapons and surrounded the house where we slept. They'd come to kill us for our faith, for what we believed in. 
It's one of those reality check moments where you question what you're living for. Was I willing to die for my faith? After a few hours of discussion, Bao had come to the agreement we would leave at sunrise, hence the quick exit. We're alive. We survived to tell the tale. Um, that was crazy. Yeah, it wasn't quite. Well, I was expecting something. Yeah, that was a bit unexpected. About to head to the airport. A couple have seen the story of a man who steps into the unknown. A good Samaritan travelling the road saw the man and his heart went out to him. The willingness to step into the unknown, to break the expected and release the unexpected. Love. It's a strong feeling of affection, a great interest and pleasure in someone. This story shows someone who loves their neighbour through all their differences, love shines through. From one man's desire to step into the unknown, he shares true love. Tomorrow's day 40 and kind of brings everything to an end, so yeah. I think this 40 day journey has given us a fresh perspective. Life never stops and we know it will end at some point. We sit out to ask the question, is there more to life than this? Is there something more than just living and letting life tick by? Is the Christian life we've grown up living worth living at all? I can honestly say, taking these 40 days to explore, we've grown, we feel like it makes more sense than ever before. We've seen poverty, but it's been filled with hope. We've seen the sights of small beginnings that change generations with faith. We've seen persecution of faith that's been filled with love. To us, the Christian faith feels more relevant than ever before. And growing up and being brought up going to church, we've been surrounded with it all. But taking this time to change perspective has opened our eyes. We feel like we view life differently. We're still living the same life, but with a changed perspective and feel closer to the Creator than ever before. As you climb the mountain, you change perspective. You start to see things that only the mountaineer can see. From a higher ground, you can view further across the land. Changes in perspective can change the way you view the world, the way you view life, the way you view faith. Day to day, as time never stops, life ticks by and you have choices to make. Choices on how you live your life. Choices how you think. Do you need a change in perspective? This has been a journey of adventure, of desire and searching. Finding 
fresh perspective, fresh understanding, a breath of life. But what did you see? Do you see a widow who was given a lot, not from her wealth, but from her heart? Do you see a faith the size of a mustard seed from small beginnings that influences the world? Do you see a good man who sees a need and fills it, no matter who receives it? Or do you see a couple who are living for a greater purpose than just living? But as I said earlier, we all have a story, a unique story, the story of our life. And every story has three acts, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Come, join me at the table, and share your story. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We had so much fun making this film and it really was a journey to remember. But we believe this is just the start. And we can't wait to hear your story at the table. From hello, what's your name? To I'll know I'll never be the same. Oh, you've been changing me. Been trying so hard not to play the fool. Love